Dream to become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein? Learn physics from Professor Saborno Isaac Bari. Let's start today's remote learning with Do Now. Hello, my name is Saborno Isaac Bari, and I love Sir Isaac Newton. Do you know what else I love? I love the law of the conservation of energy. And today, I was trying to figure out a way to connect these two beautiful physics concepts. And I stumbled upon something magical that allowed us to do this. It's a little something called roller coasters. Yes, you may think of it as a joke, but I'm going to teach you this in three different ways. As you can see, it's a board behind me. It says the context. Number one, I know to teach you conceptually, and I assume it says there. Number two, I go to teach you mathematically. And number three, I go to teach you algorithmically, or using specifically coding with the computer language C++. If you don't know what it is, you should probably know what is C first. Anyways, it's irrelevant until the third content. So let's start with the conceptual things. So uh, as you can see, there are five questions behind me. And let's go to the first one. Uh, as you can see here, what uh, is a roller coaster? It may seem obvious at first, but uh, uh, perhaps you've never looked at it this way before. A roller coaster is a machine that uses gravity, inertia, and centripetal acceleration <coughs> to send the rider certain sensations if the machine moves up, down, and around the uh, curving and the, the track road with slopes. <sighs> it's an engineering phenomenon because it allows us to make a connection between F equal to MA and <coughs> conservation of energy. In fact, later in the second content, I assume it says there, uh, <coughs> mathematics, I will show you how F equal MA, the roller coaster, allows us to make a connection between F equal to MA and uh, the concept of potential and kinetic energy. Now let's move. Now, there are three red equations uh, uh, here beside me. And let's uh, read these three red equations with me. And number one, the triple acceleration is equal to v velocity squared over radius. Number two, uh, the velocity has to be greater than or equal to the square root of dr. <coughs> Otherwise, you'd either stop at the bottom uh, or you'd fall at the top, which nobody wants. Uh, and the radius, uh, the radius had to be greater than or equal to the uh, two times the height, the height of the slope before it is shown in this diagram, divided by five. Hmm. Uh, otherwise, the same thing would happen. Your potential, uh, the, the kinetic energy would decrease and you would fall from the top or stop at the bottom. Uh, now, uh, let's move to the second question. The pink question. As you can see here, how does a roller coaster work? Now, this also may seem obvious, but here's this. A roller coaster uh, starts by going up an enormous hill. But the engineers do this because they want the roller coaster to build up potential energy. Uh, uh, so in this diagram here, there's a hill. Uh, uh, then, then, you can, when uh, the roller coaster goes down, May I please have a cup of water? I'm really sick.
like everything. Just kidding, Hopi. I have a cold. Hopi. <coughs> it goes uh, uh, down the hill and all to the loop. It's shown in that diagram. <coughs> but in order for a safe trip, a perfectly safe trip around the loop, two things are required. And they are both in the equations here. Number one, V squared it has to be greater than or equal to the square root of D R. But as I mentioned before, you'd either stop at the bottom or fall from the top. And number two, the, the radius has to be greater than or equal to two times the height of the slope of four, as is shown here, divided by five. Otherwise, the same thing would happen. You wouldn't be build up enough potential energy to later convert it to kinetic energy and then velocity. <clears throat> now, let's move on to the third question, the blue question. What are the effects of gravity on a roller coaster? Now, before we talk about gravity, gravity, let's talk about inertial reference frames. So, what is an inertial reference frame, you may ask? Well, uh, an inertial reference frame is a reference frame where uh, in one single object floats around in a void, and there are no other objects around it. Uh, scientists imagine this to use as a force field, but that's irrelevant. That is very irrelevant. Let's uh, actually go to the relevant part now. A roller coaster, right? So this roller coaster is our single object in the in the inertial reference frame, right? So if I drop the roller coaster from height eight, would it fall? No, since uh, there is no second mass around it, which means no forces, which also means no gravity. So would not fall. But we are on Earth, not in a void of nothingness. So this idea of inertial reference frame breaks down. Now you might be thinking, what are we going to do? We have no more ideas left. Or do we? We can always switch to Galileo's flat Earth approximation hypothesis, which states that one F equal to negative mg, and yeah, and two that the Earth is flat, even though he knew it was really real. And oh no, I have no markers. I'm out of stock. Oh, there it is. Technical difficulties, please. And so I go to not block what I write. So. Uh, equals to negative mg. Now let's write the Newtonian hypothesis. F equal to ma, as many of you may know it. Or, but, Newton wrote it using differentials. Well, let's use that instead, because I absolutely adore this person, which is Isaac Newton. A, a Pixar stride in Newton from the uh, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica if, uh, Britannica, if you couldn't tell. But anyways, let's set these equal to each other. Make up mg is equal to m d squared x over dt squared. Now, we can cancel out m for both sides. So negative g is equal to uh, d squared x over dt squared. Now, it would be easier to switch from differentials to regular variables. So, I go to do that. So, negative g equals a. This tells us that a is never dependent on mass. Uh, now, let's move on to the fourth question. Greed. Ooh. What could the answer to this one be? What are the effects of normal force on a roller coaster? So, the effect of normal force on a roller coaster. By the way, let's put this back in my pocket because we don't need it 
until the second content. So, the effects of normal force on a roller coaster are, let's say I jump up. First of all, what do I feel? I feel weightless because the normal force is zero. The normal force is a contact force and we feel our weight based on normal force. So if normal force is set to zero, we feel weightless. And second of all, what, do, what uh, else do I feel? I feel my stomach bulging out my belly. You, that makes, so that makes jumping a lot darker. You don't want to be a cheerleader, do you? <laughs> now, <sighs> the same thing happens on a roller coaster when it's upside down. It kind of loses contact with the rail, resulting in a feeling of weightlessness in the passengers. And so uh, the uh, wheels are like this, that rattle like this. They're losing contact. Uh, now, uh, uh, so it, feels, it creates a feeling of weightlessness. But that normal force, the uh, roller coasters wouldn't be as thrilling. Or it's exciting, or it's too much. I could do so many synonyms of happy, uh, of happy to describe it. And now, number five, final question, the colossal question, the purple question. How can you relate the law of the conservation of energy to the roller coaster? How can you relate the law of the conservation of energy to the roller coaster? Okay, so uh, this will be later shown in the mathematical part. But uh, the the law of the conservation of energy proves that here is so the radius is a function of the height of the slope. The radius uh, of this uh, the slope is a, a function of the height of the slope. Now, let's move on to the second of Mathematics! Now let's draw the center of this beautiful circle. I'll just fix that. Huh. Now, this is height R for a radius of the loop. Now if this is R, what is this height? This is 2R. Uh, and let's call this height h, in which r is a function of h, and r is 2 h over 5. But how are we going to prove that? We're going to prove that later. And now, let's start our fourth body diagram and write from right to left. So, let's draw a giant tea table. Nobody wants to have tea table here. Uh, nobody wants to have tea here, of course. Because there'll be uh, some words in on here. So top, let's write top here too. These are the only two points that matter. So top and the bottom. So the top, Let's make a hypothesis about the top because you never know your predictions can be right. Let's make an educated guess. Based on what I did on the elevator before, I think lighter. Because, yeah, you never know. You can make an educated guess. Bottom, my hypothesis is that you're heavier. Based on the results from my elevator physics thing. So the top the hypothesis is lighter. Let's just draw boxes to represent the roller coaster cars. We don't re represent silly wheels here. You're getting closer to art than you are getting to physics here. Anyway, that's irrelevant. As I said before. So hmm. Uh, this is 
F M and this is F G. Uh, so F M is putting you down in the direction you want to sit in the uh, seat. Uh, so obviously you don't break the rules. They have to implement that normal rules. Now you want to sit down here. But the roller coaster is pushing you up. And here you want to, if you're, the uh, is up, but the normal force is trying to push you down. But the force of gravity always pushes you down. So now, let's put F equal MA, or, or the famous equation, in both of these head areas of the T table. Ooh. Nobody wants to, likes to have to be with the words on their bottoms. So, Fn minus Fn minus Fd equals negative MAC. Because both of these forces are pulling down, uh, which uh, we assume is negative. Because, yeah, some is negative here. Now, Let's uh, put this equation. Fn minus Fd equals to Mac. Because it's how you want to, want to accelerate up here. So, here let's multiply everything by negative 1. Then we can make everything positive. Now, let's uh, look at this. Let's send, uh, uh, let's add FD to both sides. You would uh, cancel these and you would get FAC plus FD. Uh, and here, uh, you would get FN plus FD has to be MD equals to MAC is MV squared over R. Since greatest, oh yeah, yeah, which is with, because centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So now let's look at here, and that's that m v squared over r plus m g. So this is our equation for the bottom, and let's find out if the top is lighter or heavier. So the top from Fn, let's subtract Mg for both sides, and we get Fn is Mv squared over R minus Mg, which means that this is this plus 2 Mg equals this, which means our, hypo our hypothesis was correct. Now, which I go to represent using a hypothesis sign in the check mark. Hooray! Hooray! Now, let's look at finding the safe minimum velocity. Let's find the safe minimum velocity. Call from the equation before in the first content, uh, the minimum velocity had to be the square root of dr. But you still don't know how to do that, right? So it's always good to see how to do that, not just the answer. That's how they do it in my school. But that in my school, PS7, that's irrelevant. What is relevant is how finding the same velocity. So, uh, the safe velocity so you don't fall from the top, but uh, so you fall from the top or the bottom, as I said, the top, because you can't fall from the bottom, there's no way, right? So the top, so let's use the equation for the top. And the minimum, I said, can be is zero. Otherwise, that means you're starting to lose contact with the rail, which means no good. So, Fn has to go to zero. It has to be zero or greater. Otherwise, ah, no. So, let's 
So let's set f n to zero in our equation. Zero equals m v squared over r minus m z. m v squared, so if you were to add m g to both sides, we will get m g equals to m v squared over r. Now let's cross multiply, which means we multiply this by this and multiply this by this. This actually works. Trust me, you can try on this problem later. No, we're not doing that because it's irrelevant. So, mgr equals mv squared. Uh, now, let's divide both sides by m. We will get v squared is gr. Now, if we square root both sides, we would get v is the square root of gr, which means, what is the proof for this, uh, the equation, v is greater than or equal to the square root of gr. Otherwise, that. The Grim Reaper is coming. Uh, now, let's find the safe also separate the diagram from here. Oh yeah, there's too narrow space here. I don't think we'll be able to solve for the radius in here. Okay, so find the minimum uh, safe radius. Well, it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> so, it's the mechanical energy, which is the total energy, another way of saying the total energy, ooh, before, it has to be equal to the mechanical energy after. Because of the loss of conservation of energy, and that, and that means energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred from one place to another. So, so, that means that the universe, the total energy in the universe will be the same energy for billions of years. Which means the total energy in this roller coaster will be the same. So, mechanical energy before and mechanical energy after. So, gravitational potential energy before plus kinetic energy before, plus uh, potential energy uh, uh, spring before is equal to gravitational potential energy after, plus kinetic energy after, plus uh, spring potential energy after. Now, uh, do you think there's any springs behind the scenes in a roller coaster? No, of course not. Unless you're riding on a dangerous fancy roller coaster. So, these are set to zero. Uh, now, before the uh, roller coaster with me in it uh, uh, is still on the top. It's waiting to convert all that potential energy to kinetic energy. But it hasn't. So K is set to zero. So that leaves us with MGH is equal to two MGR, since the height is two R in that case, plus half MV squared A. And let me leave you with uh, uh, two notes. GPD equal MGH and k equal a half on v squared. These are the two equations you need. You also have pds equals half kx squared, but as we mentioned, there are no springs behind the scene, unless you're riding on a bouncy roller coaster. So, uh, you don't need that right now. So, uh, we can uh, cancel 
we can divide this whole equation by m. That then leaves us with g h equals two g r plus half v squared m, and this is the minimum. So that means that we have to put this to the square root of the g r squared, which if you can't delete out, you get g h equals two g r plus g r over two. Now we can factor out g r from everything. Hooray! G g g. Now you get h equals two r plus r over two, which leaves us with h equals five r over two. The radius would of, course, would, of course, be the inverse of this, being 2h over 5. And that's how you prove the minimum radius. R had to be greater than or equal to 2h over 5. And now, let's move on to the final content, the code. And no, this is not robot code. That's for the future. This is C++ code. This is not what you see on the internet when you play games and yeah, do all that stuff that we don't do here. That's who ate HTML. We're using C++. So now let's get to the coding. Okay, I teleported here in a quadrillionth of a quadrillionth of a second. But anyways, we're going to convert all this into C++ code. And we're going to, yes, we're going to do these two both in one single program. So let's start. Just kidding, that's not how real, uh, that's not how real C++ code looks like. It's not gibberish. So don't try doing this on your computer. It'll break. So, hashtag include iostream. You should all know why you need this. Now, hashtag include CMAP. And do you know why? So that the computer knows what it's doing when we put an enter in square root using namespace std. Int main. Calm down, C++, it's just incomplete. Stop showing red things. And by the way, if you see red things under your uh, code, that means there's something wrong with it. So, let's put uh, enter in the string input. This is going to be useful for later. Because this is for an if statement to, uh, to, uh, to like, yeah. This is what happens if, when you select something. A certain input happens. Uh, so, string input. A certain output happens if you put a certain in input. So, count, which is... Uh, the typical word for printing. What do you want? Now we have to put backwards slash n to change lines. Number one, the radius. Number two, The velocity and L. Huh. Now let's see what this prints. Because coding is all about. Okay, let's not do it because it'll probably waste time. And it's going to take me long enough to open the output tab. But this is going to change lines. Remember that. 
The backward slash is here on your keyboard. It may be hard to memorize, but just memorize. So, if this is why we need to put string input equals equals. If we just put one, which is uh, for the radius, that's going to be wrong. We have to put it uh, in, in a. That's going to be a string. It's going to be wrong. It, it has to be in quotation marks so it's those. It's the user doing it, not the computer. If input equals one, put curly braces to show what the input should be. Output should be. Count. I need mean double. Eight for equal zero for height. And we want the radius. So radius is two eight over five as it says there. We're going to leave double is for labeling it a, a, a number with an infinite amount of decimals. So count what is the height of the the we're referencing this slope, that slope on the diagram. Sin eight. If you like to the lot, it has to be low on this line here. So, uh, uh, the radius, double radius, because we need to label it, radius for r, had to be equal to 2 multiplied by 8 divided by 5. So, count. The radius, oh wow, the radius must be space R or let's start the, let's start like, getting farther out. Uh, or greater. Mm. N slash. No, no. Slash N. Date. For using. This. Program. And slash created. No, no, this is the wrong way. Slash n created by Saborno Barry. Enter your name. If that's my name, Saborno Barry, as I announced in the first content, you enter your name. The right created by Saborno Barry, that's taking credit. <laughs> that means I'm taking the credit. So, but we, there's a second input, so we have to put this outside here, and we have to put else. Uh, that, that means if something else happens, Else, that uh, this is what happens for multiple faces. Else, if input is has to be two, uh, put the quotation mark. It's not a string. Put that. We're starting to run out of space here, but lucky me, I have this. 
So else, we only need to focus on this part right now. That means that it wants the velocity, which is referenced by the equation. the square root of dr. So double g. So we're not setting g to zero because it's on earth. So g has to be 9.81. This is what you have to write for things you know are constant. So double and r equals zero because you don't know the radius set. The radius could be a uh, five. The radius could be ten. The radius could be a hundred. The radius could be a thousand. Wow, that's intimidating. So, count what is the radius of the loop, and L. In R. So, uh, uh, you wait, I feel like something is wrong here. So, sin R. So, I felt like something was improper right there. So, hmm, the velocity, or double, since we didn't label it, it's like labels on a box. Double V equals to a square root, square root of this. Uh, the square root of, let's say, wait, G times... Whoa! Come easy. Now, this doesn't show a red line under it. Now, let's see what happens if I delete C map. It has a red line under it. Since it doesn't know what to, what on earth square root means if you don't put C map. So, count. Hmm. The velocity. Thank you. Must be. Oh, right. Put a space. V. Or greater. Be what I wrote because it'll be easier. Command C, Command V. Must be weird. So this should be the end of the twenty-five line program. Let's see the whole program. Oh goodness. It's large. But this this is the whole program. The whole program. It's going to take me a while. Oh there we go. Finally I drag the output tab correctly. What do I want? The radius or the velocity? Let's see. What? Let's see the radius. What the? Well, let's see. Let's go see what went wrong. It'll just stay calm. Stay calm. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong here. 
I did a picture. Uh, I did it off the computer to uh, remember the input. Woo! Well, that's what caused all the things to go wrong. So, let's start with what? The radius. The height of the slope. Let's say it's 30. The radius must be 12 or greater. That's correct. Since 30 times 2 here is 60, 60 divided by 5 is 12. Now, for the square root one, we need a calculator. Because you can't do that in your head, surely. So let's go to the velocity. The radius of the loop, let's say 20, 25. 15.6605 or greater. Let's check that music hour. T-I-30-X-I-I-F. So, a D, which is 9.81, times the radius, which is 25, is 245.25. If I square root my answer, I get 15.660459976. Yeah, the computer, cut the computer some slack. It just estimated, okay? It didn't want to uh, crash because this is probably a rascal. But anyway, that's irrelevant. <coughs> Now you won't look at roller coasters the same way again, I bet. Roller coasters are a physics lesson waiting to be failed. That's what you learned from today's lesson. Bye! Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.